Nearly three quarters of the world's timber comes from conifers, trees with seed in cones. Conifer forests are the main forest type in the northern hemisphere, especially in the cooler parts. Australia, though, has very few native conifers. Our native trees are eucalypts, which are unique to Australia, and which produce excellent timber. Why then, in recent years, have large conifer plantations, in our case pine trees, been established in Australia? The answer is that conifer plantations have many practical, economic and environmental benefits. In practical terms, pine trees produce a distinctive type of timber, which is lighter and easier to work. This timber is called softwood. Eucalypts produce a harder, heavier timber, which is known as hardwood. For carpentry and building construction, softwood has many advantages. It is air or kiln dried quite quickly, providing a stable timber that is easy to cut, plane and nail. Most hardwoods are more difficult to use, but their strength, durability and beauty makes them very suitable for supporting structures and interior finishes, whereas softwood is perfectly suited for the main framework. The economical advantage of pines is that they produce much more timber in a shorter time than native species. The increased production of radiata pine, also known as the remarkable pine, can be up to 50 times that of eucalypts. The three reasons for this higher productivity are that pine trees have a faster growth cycle, they have a higher yield of usable timber per hectare, and a large number can be planted in a small area. The growth cycle or rotation time is the number of years between planting a crop and the final harvest. Radiata pine, due to its very fast growth rate, has a rotation period of 35 to 40 years, while eucalypts have a much longer period, ranging from 80 to 200 years. Pines can produce more usable timber, since they have a long straight trunk and small branches. Thus, the knots which branches produce are small, and don't interfere so much with the grain and strength of the wood. On the other hand, a eucalypt's large branches create knots, which result in less usable timber. Thus, the only part of a eucalypt used for timber is below the first branches, whereas practically the whole length of a pine can be used. Many more trees are grown per hectare in a pine forest than in a native forest. This is because pines have a shallower root system and can use a smaller amount of water and nutrients more effectively. The huge production rate of pine trees is clearly shown by the fact that radiata plantations make up only 1% of forested areas in New South Wales, yet already they supply 25% of the state's timber and will eventually supply over 60% when existing trees mature. Apart from the commercial advantages of pine plantations, there is another important benefit in terms of the environment. Pine planting takes the pressure off native forests to fulfil our timber needs. This is important when we consider that only 6% of Australia's land mass can grow commercial forest because of our low rainfall. And only a third of this has been reserved specifically for forestry purposes. From the very earliest days, Australia has always had to import a large proportion of its timber, mainly softwoods. So, at the beginning of this century, foresters began to search and experiment for a suitable tree to meet Australia's timber needs. Radiata pine, which originated in Southern California, showed itself to be the most successful when planted in areas with a climate similar to its original environment. One of these areas is the tablelands of New South Wales. Temperatures in both regions tend to be moderate to cool, with an average summer maximum of 27 degrees and a winter minimum of 2 degrees. 
And both areas have an average rainfall of about 750 millimetres, most of which falls in the cooler months. Each area also has similar soils that are well drained and land that is not too rocky or steep. Growing a pine plantation is like growing any other sort of crop. First, a suitable site is selected, usually land that's already been substantially cleared for farming. If the area has scattered trees, they are felled for timber, and most of the vegetation then cleared. Areas of natural forest along watercourses are left intact to prevent soil erosion and provide a habitat for the wildlife of that area. These are called retention strips. The rest of the cleared debris is pushed into windrows, which are later burnt off under safe weather conditions. Between the windrows, the soil is ploughed to prepare it for planting in the winter and to reduce weed competition. At this stage, roads are built to allow easy access for tending the plantation and also for fire protection and eventually harvesting. Pine cones are selected from genetically improved trees which are specially grown in seed orchards. The seeds are removed from the cones in extracting kilns, which are like tumble dryers. The seeds are then sown in nursery beds, where they are carefully tended for about nine months. The operation that we're undertaking here is root wrenching. Root wrenching is carried out to cut off the taproot at about 10 or 12 centimetres below the surface of the soil. This promotes a more vigorous growth of the lateral roots and helps to produce a hardier seedling. Root wrenching is then carried out again in about June or July, just prior to the lifting of the seedlings. The root wrenching helps loosen the soil and enables us to pull the seedlings out of the ground. They are then taken to the sorting shed and sorted and packed for transplanting out into the field. It's pretty important to have good lateral root system. This is a, a good plantable plant with a strong root system and it's not spindly. These ones uh, have got a poor root system, they are bendy and very spindly, so they are culls. That double leader would eventually break off it was, if it was planted. Most of those are culls. Planting may be done either by machine or by hand, usually in rows about three metres apart. They are planted close together so that initially they'll be in competition with each other, forcing them to grow upwards, not outwards. This will eventually produce longer lengths of sawmill logs with no large knots. Fertiliser in pellet form is applied soon after planting. And the seedlings must also be sprayed against weeds or insects, which could easily overrun a young pine plantation. From then, the trees need little maintenance until they're about eight years old, when the lower branches are pruned. The reason we prune trees, firstly, 
is for fire protection. When the limbs are pruned off, well, a fire cannot raise up the tree. Secondly, for hygiene and accessibility to the forest. And also, the better trees later on are high pruned to create better logs for milling. At around about age 15, the crowns of the trees in the plantation have grown together to such an extent where the amount of light available to individual trees is limited. This causes these lower limbs to die off. As a result, the plantation isn't growing as it normally should. To remedy this, we thin out the trees that have no future potential, such as this one. This enables the trees that with future potential to grow on more quickly and become saw logs at some later stage. After the first thinning, the trees will be thinned out again about every six to seven years. Each time, the number of trees per hectare is reduced, but this allows the stronger trees to grow faster, so that the amount of useful timber actually increases. Just prior to thinning, marking crews go through and assess and mark the trees so that the worst trees are removed in each thinning operation. Trees that are assessed for removal are those that are too small, are those with deformities such as whirls of branches that would create knots in timber, large individual branches, double leaders and other deformities. Uh, the reason I mark this tree is that it's a lot smaller form than all the others and it has a double leader halfway up, as which you can see, and makes it very difficult for processing. In the first thinning operation, the number of trees is reduced by more than half. Harvesting the trees is a highly mechanised process. First, the trees are felled and stacked in piles by a feller buncher. Following this, a processor is used to strip off the branches and cut the logs into more manageable lengths. In second and third thinnings, larger and larger trees are removed, involving much heavier machinery. The logs are collected from the forest by harvesters and then unloaded into trailers. They are now big enough to be accepted by the sawmill for sawn timber. These thinnings leave only the best and biggest trees to be retained until the end of the rotation when the 35 to 40 year old trees are finally clear felled. These trees are probably only one-tenth of the original number planted, yet they carry about half the total volume of wood produced by the plantation overall.
fire is always a major concern for the forester, as it represents the pine tree's greatest enemy. Trained firefighters must keep a continual watch over the plantation and reduce the amount of fuel in the surrounding country by careful hazard reduction burning in the cool season. After the final felling, the land is cleared and ploughed and once again prepared for the seedlings. As with any crop, pine trees have a continuous cycle of planting and harvesting, although the time in between is not measured by seasons, but by decades. The timber crop has a wide range of uses, depending on the age and size of the trees produced at each harvesting. The smaller trees from the first thinnings are used in the manufacture of paper or particle board for cupboards and flooring. Or they may be used as poles for playgrounds and fencing. The larger trees from subsequent harvests are used for timber production or the near. Timber is a vital resource that we use in one way or another every day. In fact, it's estimated that every man, woman and child in Australia consumes over one cubic metre of wood per year. Luckily, wood is a renewable resource. As long as there's sunshine and enough water and soil, wood can always be produced. But careful planning is required to provide for the future. This pine seedling, planted today, may not be harvested and used until your children or even grandchildren are old enough to build a house with the timber it will produce. At the moment, Australia still needs to import around $1,600 million worth of wood materials to meet our local needs. But most of this timber could be grown locally. Pine plantations have shown that they can meet the timber needs of Australia. In combination with conservative and productive management of native forests, pine plantations will year by year bring Australia closer to becoming self-sufficient in timber.